Coming up, we're about to head inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley for lunch on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am Craig Williams. I'm Rhino. And as I already said, we are going to head inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, for a little bit of lunch at the Leaky Cauldron. Akio food, am I right? I know. It has been years since we've reviewed this. I think it was like 2016 maybe. Yeah. It might even be longer than that. It might have been 2015. I definitely don't fit in the clothes I was wearing the last time we did it. No, no, no. And JL was around. Yeah. So it has definitely been a long time for us. So you know what? We're probably not going to end up trying the favorites that are available here. But at the very least, we're going to take a look at it, say if it's still worth going out of your way for. Because this has always been one of the restaurants we recommend more than anything else. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to that in a second. But before we do... Got to remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Costs you no extra money and you get the supports of one of the amazing travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote. Rhino, let's say we go into Diagon Alley, do you? Uh, diagonally. Okay, well, let's go. Head up the he Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron. We were seated at our table, our food was brought to us, and what did I get, you're asking? Well, I got the uh, Shepherd's Pasty Pie, which is a vegan option. It is $16.49. Uh, meatless beef crumbles and vegetable stew hand pie served with creamy stone ground mustard dipping sauce, apple beet salad, and wedge fries. That's how it's described on the site. So. Uh, I feel like they skipped a little bit on the fries. I feel like I could have more fries, but... I like a good white fry. It's good. So I'm just gonna have a piece. Just, just cut right in here. A lot of crumbles in here. A lot of beef crumbles. Very flaky. I, I don't know why I thought this was gonna be like a shepherd's pie. Like, I just didn't read it right. I thought it was gonna be like a pie pie. A ham pie. It's fine the, without the sauce. Now I'm going to do the sauce. So that's the stone ground mustard. It's pretty good. I'm just going to pull back my stuff, put that on there. So I'm just going to pick it up, I think, because I think it's going to be easier to do it that way. So it has carrots, peas, and there's the meatless crumbles. And I feel like there might be mushrooms in here, or this could be a mushroom-based um, meatless beef. But anyway, um, I mean, I like it. I like it a lot with the stone ground mustard on it. It's kind of light, and, and it's a lot lighter than I expected, which makes me happy because I was complaining at the beginning that I didn't want to get a really heavy food item because it's a thousand degrees outside. So. So far, so good. Let me just take a little bite of the beet salad, which I'm not usually a fan of, and I know Craig hates when we say that stuff, but... I love beet salad, though. Ooh. It's actually pretty surprising. It's very, um, like, light and a little citrusy. It doesn't have that super earthy flavor I feel like I don't like from beets, so... Not bad. I did get another item. Should I talk about that right now, too? You can, if you want it. So I, I have always said that I think the best uh, drink item in the Wizarding World, at least in Diagon Alley, is not butterbeer. It is in fact this Aussie's fizzy orange juice. This is $5.49. Um, it is described as effervescent fresh orange beverage with notes of vanilla and cinnamon. And I believe it's Otter, it's not Aussie. Oh, what did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, I said Aussie. Yeah, like the Osborne. Yeah, I go, <laughs> Sharon! What was, what was um, the Weasley's mother's name? Mm -hmm. Hermione! I can't think of anything. Why do I feel? I feel like it's Maggie? Maggie? Yeah. Is it Maggie? No. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody will tell us in the We'll Google it after this, but 
Um, I love this drink. I love the, the little cinnamon sugar on the rim. I love the orange juice, and I love that little the flavor Molly inside of it. Beasley. Molly, I should have said that. Molly. Molly! Molly. <laughs> anyway, um, I highly recommend this drink if you have never tried it before. I think it's really worth trying. Um, it's I, I want to know really how they make it, because I would love to remake this at my house. Um, and yeah, it's light, it's refreshing. It's got a lot of sugar in it, obviously, because it's orange juice and the cinnamon sugar rim and everything like that. But uh, you know what? Some days you need it. Today I needed it. I've had just about everything here on the menu over the years of Leaky Cauldron being around and accessible to us muggles. And today I decided to go with something that kind of showcased off a little bit more of the menu. And that of course is the mini pie combination. It's $16.99 and you get both a mini cottage pie and a mini fisherman's pie served with a garden salad. Now the cottage pie that you can get on its own is a savory combination of beef and chunky vegetables and a potato crust served with a garden salad. And the fisherman's pie is salmon, shrimp, and cod baked together under a potato crust served with a garden salad. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm looking right at the little two mini pie I have here and I see lots of peas in this one so I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is the cottage pie and then the other one that's just the mashed potato tops just ever so flaked and broiled right at the top I'm assuming that's the seafood one and you know what the seafood pies aren't my favorite thing in the world so I'm gonna I was completely wrong nope <laughs> right up completely wrong there's just peas in both of them. This is the cottage pie. Okay. I never have felt so embarrassed in my life. <laughs> I just, I feel so judged by myself. It's awful, 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 but okay. Take two. I've never really been that much of a fan of seafood pies. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start with the seafood pie and uh, go from there. So just picking this right up right away. I immediately pulled out two shrimp, and I'll say it is very watery inside the pie as I'm looking down at it. There's no way you'd ever be able to see inside. You would be able to see in person, but very interesting. So, I, you know what? Here goes nothing. I actually took a couple bites. Uh, first I had only the shrimp, and then the next bite I had was only salmon, and then the final bite was the cod. Uh, the shrimp had like no flavor at all uh, it just it just was shrimp unseasoned shrimp dropped in this so didn't really care much for that the salmon actually was seasoned very nicely and like if you had that outside of the pie it'd be very good the cod also wasn't that bad but overall this thing is just it's like it's lacking seasoning so like what i would probably do in a situation like that this that i'm in so I would grab the HP sauce. The no, Harry Potter sauce? it does not stand for Harry Potter sauce, but I would put that on. So it's basically like a steak sauce, and yes, I just did put an excessive amount yeah. on there. Punching. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. But yeah, it's a uh, very similar to like A1, but it'll bring the flavor. Hopefully, it brings the flavor with this. Now it tastes like only HP sauce, <laughs> but it's a lot better than it was before. Now, let me dive in on this cottage pie real quick, which I'm assuming is going to be the superior of the two. And it just looks good. Like you see all that beef and the vegetables, the potatoes. This looks delectable. Looks like a better version of the inside of Rhino's hand pie. This is really nice. You know, it's a really good savory dish already feels filling after just a little bit of the mashed potatoes and the beef inside. There's a slight hint of sweetness in it too that's kind of helping with the saltier beef that's inside, but you know, this is this is a nice little cottage pie. It's obviously not super authentic. It's not the best one I've ever had, but I would actually do this again if I was, you know, really in the mood for for something like this. It's pretty tasty. Of course, mine does come with a salad too and I feel very weird reviewing a bunch of greens that are just laying on the plate. You know, it's better than nothing. I will say, it's a nice blend of different uh, greens. You now there's spinach in there, 
Uh, there's obviously what looks like to be just like romaine as well. It's, it's a nice blend. It's not just like, here's a salad that we didn't try hard at all on. And yeah, the only thing I hate is that you only get, you get Ken's dressing. They give you the choice of ranch, light Italian, fat-free ranch, blue cheese, or no dressing at all. So like, I chose the blue cheese. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Rhino, what did you think overall of our meal at the Leaky Cauldron? Um, I thought it was good. I, I'm glad that I tried um, something new, for me at least. I don't know how long it's been on the menu. I feel like I, I didn't see it the last time I was there, but I can't remember the last time I was there. But it was, um, I, you know, I, I'm glad that there were two different vegan options that were there. And yep. um, I'm not disappointed with my choice, but I'm... Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. See, I usually get like the bangers and mash, or um, I like to try something different every time. The Scotch eggs that are there. I like to rotate through my options, but I'd say this. It was a pretty good option in terms of like it felt. Um, I feel full, but I also feel like it was light, and it didn't. It didn't weigh me down in the way where I was a little like when we talked about it before we ordered, where I was like, I don't know. I'm gonna eat this, and I'm gonna feel like Ugh, afterwards. But I have to say, I actually feel pretty good. Yeah, I feel really good with my choice in terms of, you know, handling the Florida heat and then also having a lot of, uh, you know, obviously mashed potatoes that are housing uh, very warm underlings in it. I don't know what <laughs> I'm trying to way say. To describe a yeah, pie. but that's how I was describing it. But ultimately, you know, I. I was happy that I got the sampling because I do think I've had the cottage pie here before. I definitely have never ordered the seafood one. I think you had the cottage pie in the video we did. Are you kidding? You, no, I'm not. I, 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 I have definitely been here with you and you have eaten the cottage pie. And I'm gonna I, be so mad I, if that's the case. Like, like, I feel like I'm gonna check, but um, I, I, I'm positive I have been here with you uh, and you've had a cottage no. pie before because you've talked about it so much. I really hope I didn't do that because you know, I feel like when I usually come to Leaky Cauldron, I actually usually go for the bangers and mash. That's like my number one option to go to. Nothing against the fish and chips here. I just usually, if I'm going to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter for fish and chips, I usually get it over at Three Broomsticks because I feel like that's the standout dish over there. So I get, you know, toad in the hole here. I get bangers and mash, but you're right. I probably did get the cottage pie and now I'm really, Really I'm trying to look starting it up, to freak out about it. Yeah, I can't. If, I mean, regardless, the cottage pie was so much better than the seafood pie that I would say it holds up, and you should come here for it. But really, I don't think you can go wrong with bangers and mash, fish and chips, toad in the hole, all the ones I already mentioned. And I will say, yeah, I was looking at rhinos, and I really wanted it. I thought that looked like a really good little hand pie there. I think, I think my mistake was cutting it in half, to be honest with you. I should have just started at one end to, to go to the other side. But uh, really, we needed to see what it looked like on the yeah. inside, too, for the photos and stuff. But um, it was like, it was light. It was flaky. It was a really good, like, little little uh, hand pie thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of wish there was maybe, like, a different um, sauce for it. I tried it with the HP sauce. Too, and that did not do it for me. But the mustard was definitely the superior of the two sauces, but it was something, there was like, I just wanted like something else. I don't know what I wanted, but I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. I did, that's just a preference though. That's just a sauce yeah. thing. Um, but yeah. Well, one more thing we need to talk about with it is the process that we actually had to go through in order to get our food from Leaky Cauldron. Uh, they were only taking people at the time we were there with mobile orders. I'm yeah, I've sure never done you, this before either yeah. here. I, I've mobile ordered, but I've never done it for Leaky Cauldron, and I'm sure they will take people who, you know, don't want to use the mobile ordering system, but they really were only taking people who use the mobile order through the app, at least for the time that we were there. So it's a very easy system. You know, if you're an annual pass holder, you actually can apply your discount in there. Uh, it shows the full menu. You're able to make your customizations, your different drink selections, all, everything that you would get also if you would just, you know, walk up to the restaurant and order. But it was still a weird process because of it. So we walked, like we placed our order mm -hmm. and then it said to walk up to the entrance of Leaky Cauldron. And we did that. And then once we got there, 
on the app, we had to press, I'm here, prepare my order. And then it popped up with the screen where you input your table number because at Leaky Cauldron, uh, even if you ordered the normal way, you go up, you order your food, and then you go and sit down at a table and they bring the food to you. So it's that, you know, that kind of quick service where it feels a little bit more upscale because yeah. you're not just like carrying your food on a tray to where you're going. So it just feels a little bit fancier. But I, w I will give it this. It's also nice that you're basically like, I know when I get my food, I'm going to have somewhere to sit. Exactly. Because I will say that's the problem in a lot of places that do like this mobile ordering is that I feel like you, it's chaotic and then you get it and you're like, well, now I'm just like, now I'm stressed out because I'm in the sun and everything. And I almost have it. It's I, fine. I have I have us inside of Leaky Cauldron, but I, I can't I can't see what the food is just I'm, yet. I'm still gonna keep going then. So we placed our mobile order, walked up, they did all that in the app, where then we had to get in the regular line that you would normally go in if you were ordering food. Once we got up to the point where the registers were, then there was a team member there that asked how many was on our party. She assigned us the table, we put that in an app, and then another team member walked us to our table, we sat down, and then shortly thereafter, our food was delivered. And I thought it was a really a really nice process that way. You know, it, it was a little bit of wait. We had, I wanna say maybe like 50 people in front of us in line that were already in there. You know, not 50 groups, just 50 people. And we maybe waited 10 minutes after we placed our mobile order. So it was not a bad system at all. I thought it, it worked very smoothly and you know, the hard part about Leaky Cauldron is I feel like you either get a really well-lit table right in the center of the room, but you're on the long benches, so it's a little bit noisier. You might be sitting very close to other people, but then if you sit in the more private alcoves, then it's very, very dark inside. But, you know, some people want to eat in the dark. I will say, air conditioning was top-notch oh, inside yes, there today. Yes, for sure. I think we were right under a vent, so it helped out a lot more, but... Rhino, I don't. Up. I don't think I see it. I see bangers Hang, and mash. What? Hang on. We'll 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 jump to the future and Rhino. We'll see if I found if you found what I ate. Okay. okay. We just jumped back to the future and mm -hmm. we have our verdict. Rhino was half right. I have gotten cottage pie before. Not at, well, at Leaky Cauldron. And I think there it was just like a straight up shepherd's pie. Yeah. If I remember correctly, probably could have checked the menu to see on that one because I'm sure. It's still the exact same, but I did get that at three broomsticks. So we weren't wrong, but the last time we reviewed it, Rhino, you had the toad in hole. Yeah, I don't, even, I don't even remember. And that's the sausage that's placed in the puff pastry. Yeah. And then I had the uh, stew, the Guinness the stew, stew that yeah. they had there. So that was the last time we ate there. So he wasn't completely wrong, not completely right. But I will say, apparently I just have a knack for wanting to get these different pies inside the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And I'm gonna own that and make it my thing. But yeah, so the process of mobile ordering and sitting down and eating was super easy. The food, like I said, look at what seems best to you. Make the choice, I think you're gonna be okay with it. Yeah, and I, like we said, I, I really appreciate this place because I feel like it still, even after all these years, hasn't dissolved into like hot dogs and chicken nuggets. It's still somewhere to get something interesting that feels really in theme with the land you're in. Yeah. And I enjoy and, it, and it's good. And the theming inside is incredible. Yeah. Like, it just, it, it still amazes me when you walk in and you see that vaulted ceiling and yeah. the giant cauldron that has the crack in it that's I, leaking. And I like the pictures that are hanging up everywhere yeah. too, of the witches. It's wonderful. Really, really recommend it. So I'm gonna say head over to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley and have a meal inside the Leaky Cauldron. But Rhino, I'm melting. Like literally, yeah. I'm melting. Girl, I so, am living in a frying pan right now. And because of that, I think we're gonna have to say that it's time to go. So thank you all. Oh, seriously, hey, no, hey, no. Thank hey now, you. Hey now. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this dining review of the Leaky Cauldron. If you did and you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comment section. <laughs> If you're listening to the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition, please subscribe wherever you listen, and if you can leave us a rating and review, we'd also appreciate that. And, of course, I have to mention, too, if you want to support us more, you can always book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. 
But that's it for what, Rhino and I here. Wait, what's the what's in Free Guy that he walks down the street singing the Mariah Carey song? I don't remember. The, sweet, sweet, yeah. Da, 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 da. That's so sweet, like, sweet, I'm trying to give you the hair. Some babe. Yeah, it's really sweet, sweet. all over the place right now. <laughs> it's a music video here for the viewers. <laughs> okay, okay. But, hey, Rhino, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon with another episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name.